Praise and thank you for a lost time with honor. Seek his, his assistance, his guidance, and his forgiveness. And take refuge with him from the evil of our souls and the consequences of our misdeeds. Whoever our Lord is guiding to, nothing is seen, and whether you see, nothing can guide. I have testified that nothing in no one will be virtue besides the law alone. He has no partners. And I testified that Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, so the law of why he brought out Adam Sullivan and the servant of Messenger, he can ask the law to make him peace and send him a salutation on the blessed day. This as we ask him to grant peace to his family members, companions, and everyone who follows the business until we drill into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al Bukhari, Rahmatullahi, he reports in the Sahih hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, La yazadu qalb al kabiri shaban kithnatayn. The heart of the old, old person remains young with respect to two things. Hub al dunya wa tul al amal. The love of the dunya and the prolongation of hope. So the heart of the old person or the older person remains young with respect to two things the love of this world, of this realm, and the prolongation of hope. Now, with respect to the second, I'll speak a little bit about this later, but the prolongation of hope is fundamentally the delusion that we, we have about living a long life. We don't know if we'll have the next moment. We don't know if we'll live on for the next day, the next year, etc., etc. And we constantly delay things, we procrastinate. We'll become pious in the future. But with respect to Hubbat Dunya, there's a lot I want to focus on today with respect to Ed Dunya. First and foremost, the word Dunya sometimes is a reference to the life that we're living right now, Al Hayat Dunya, this lower life that Allah refers to as in the Quran over and over. That is to say, it is just the or what it is placed in, in contradistinction to Al Hayat Al Akhirah, the afterlife, or the final life. And the afterlife, it is better and more lasting. So sometimes it is a reference to the life that we live. We breathe air through our lungs, etc., etc. Sometimes the dunya is a reference to this world upon which we live, and then other times it is a reference to the things and the attractions that, uh, that exist in this world, the goods that we seek to consume and to acquire in this world. And so the Prophet says that the old person or the elderly person or the, is, is to remain young with respect to the love of the dunya. That we constantly hope to live longer, to have health for longer. We, we hope to find the fountain of youth one day. Uh, and so we delay and delay things, especially when we're young. But when we get older, even though we may give up or lose attraction to or the desire for certain types of delights, that with respect to the love of this world, the attachment to this world, we don't lose it that easily. We don't lose it realistically because we've amassed so much. We have family we don't want to let go of. We have wealth that we hope that we can take with us in our, uh, uh, when we die. But of course, we can't, etc., etc. But the Prophet Sallallahu he said about the dunya, at dunya maguna, maguna ma fiha illa dhikrullah, that the dunya is cursed and everything in it is cursed except for the remembrance of Allah, a learned person and one who's learned. And when Allah or the Messenger والسلام, says that something is cursed, what it means fundamentally is that it is something that places distance between you and your creator. It, it, it distances, you, distances you from Allah's mercy. Everything in this world, it takes you away from Allah's mercy. It takes you away from the focus of that which is most important, which is the connection with your Creator. Because all of us are going to return to our Creator. And the proof that we don't, uh, that we're never meant to be in this world forever is the very fact that we die. That is the proof that Allah did not create you for the dunya. He created you for the akhirah. That is what He created you for. Yeah, not for the dunya. And so you die as a reminder of that fact. But he goes on and says, the Prophet says, If, if this world of the dunya had weighed a gnat's wing in the sight of God, then he would not give a, an unbeliever one drink of water. If it meant anything to Allah, to say, this means nothing to him. 
The value of this world. You place value on things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places no value on. That if it meant anything to God, he would not give a capital one thing to water. But he must have had it because it doesn't mean anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it meant something as small as that. But also we learn from this hadith how much iman means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he says he would not give a kafir one drink of water, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he values your iman. He places his value on faith in him, faith in his messenger, alayhi salatu salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi also told us, Hufa to dunya bin makarah. Hufa to nara bin shahawat. This jannah has been surrounded by undesirable things. Unattractive things. And the hellfire has been surrounded with attractive things. Perfect in In other words, the things that people enjoy the most in this world seem to be a lot of them, if not most of them, just haram. As a believer, you can't indulge. You're not allowed to indulge. People get drunk, people get high, people do. They have illicit intercourse on a regular basis. They sleep around. A lot of those things have been attractive to the average person because we have these appetites within us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created within us. But the believer who is seeking Jannah, that we, we bear patiently. We restrain ourselves. We resist our urges. Imam al-Shafi'i, he said about the dunya, وَمَنْ يَذُقِ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنِّي فَعْمْتُهَا وَسِيقَ إِلَيْنَا عَضْرُهَا وَعَذَابُهَا we have tasted the dunya, and the, the sweet and the bitter have been conveyed to us. And when I reflected upon the dunya, I found it nothing more than delusion and falsehood. In the same way that a mirage appears in the midst of the desert. It is nothing more than a rotting corpse that dogs, they are competing with one another to consume. So if you avoid it, then you are a source of peace for the inhabitants of this world. But if you acquire it, then the dogs, they will compete and buy with you for it. So one should leave off all of the um, unwanted and additional things from this world because it is haram upon the heart of the pious to consume and acquire them. The dunya itself, the nature of the dunya is that as connected with the human being and the different appetites and urges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is that it creates within the human being jealousy and hasad that the human being is inclined towards miserliness we're inclined towards um, self-love anger, so many different things we're inclined towards Right, and, and, and we have to be very careful, especially about al hasad about jealousy regarding the dunya, because fundamentally it is it is a, a way of challenging it, uh, the, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, we find someone who may be more handsome than you, or more beautiful, or has more wealth than you have, has more knowledge, has more popularity, that we want those things innately. That's a long way Allah created us. But we have been put here to put down our urges. Right? And when we see these other people who have what we don't have, or have more than what we have, and we want it to be removed from them, then it's fundamentally us saying, Oh Allah, why did you create such a person? Oh Allah, why did you make such a person so beautiful? Why did you give such a person so much wealth? Why did you give such a person so much knowledge? Why did you give them so much popularity? I deserve that. Or even if you don't want it for yourself, I don't believe that they deserve it. I, and so, so is it to say that you are more wise than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are wiser than your creator. And this is a fundamental flaw of the needs. And this is where I conclude. al Hassan al Basri he said that مَنْ كَانَ ذُنُوبُهُ فِي شَهْوَةٍ فَرْجُ لَهُ التَّوْبَةٍ that any person's 
when that whoever's sins relate to a passion, then we should put hope in their repentance. If it is related to a passion that you have, an appetite that you have, that you overeat or you other things like that, we should hope that people will will commit they will make tulpa, they will repent. Woman cannot be a kibri for a tulpa. But whoever's sins are connected with pride, they don't put any hope in their repentance. And he said, with the legal Arabatica, Adam will it bleeds. And the evidence of that is Adam and Iblis. In other words, Iblis and Adam both they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Adam's sin was with respect to his passions. That he ate from the tree. He had an appetite to eat from the tree. He wanted to know. He was curious to know what would, what would happen. Iblis told him something. He was curious. He wanted to confirm that he was telling the truth. But Iblis, his sin related to Pride. Allah said, bow down, prostrate to Adam. I'm not going to create to prostrate to something created from mud. No. I'm better than him. And so for this reason, at least it's, you don't accept that we don't expect any Torah from the least ever. And Allah tells us that he won't for a Torah. You know, we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he rate this hadith of the Prophet by some other conclusion is a reminder of us and of our states in the uh, the, the reasons why I'm in this world and also the potentials, uh, uh, potential flaws that may develop within us. He says, <laughs> that the heart of the older person remains young with respect to two things, <laughs> the love of this dunya and the prolongation of hope. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he reduce and remove from us the love of this dunya as we prepare to return to him, may because all of us are going to return to him, inshallah. I pull the holy hand up. What's up with that? We were going to be presenting to him in the back. Alhamdulillah, we're going to be in the salat of Salaam, and I'm going to be in the salat of Salaam, and I'm going to be in the salat of Salaam, and I'm going to be in the salat إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم حب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والأحيان ودعنا من الراشدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وارحم محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إن تحميد مجيد اللهم صل على ملائكتك والمقربين وعلى أنبيائك والمرسلين وعلى أحيطائك الأجمعين ربنا لا تزل قلوبنا بعد الفجر جنى بحبنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت بحاب ربنا إني تجامع الناس اليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يكف المعاد ربنا ربنا لا تجزي قلوبنا ربنا حبلنا من أزواجنا وقربنا حبلنا من أزواجنا وضرباتنا قرة عالم وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا اجعلنا مقيم صراع من يكون ضريتنا ربنا بتخب الدعاء ربنا كلنا والوالدين والمؤمنين اليوم يقوم الحساب ربنا وانزلنا منزلا مباركا فأنت خير المنزلين مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من المدينين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك الرفيقة وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسيكون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين وعقل الصالح